yeah, like that's going to dry flat. Good day, fellow Russians. Okay, I've painted cabinets before. My go-to is a roller. I've used spray paint, I used brushes, I used all kinds of different techniques, but I think I uh, came up with a better one, which I'll show you in a second. So, but just remember before we even begin. That's right, LSS baby, like, share, subscribe, okay? All right, if we look at this cabinet, it has puck marks. It's got all kinds of things going on. It's not smooth. It's smooth, but it's ugly. It's grainy. It's doing all kinds of stuff. If you look at my centaur video where I did a black cabinet, black is very unforgiving. So I don't regret what I did with that one with the wet sanding and, and all that good stuff. Uh, it came out beautiful. But with white, it's uh, a little bit more forgiving, but still, I don't think this is indicative of what we should be doing as the craftsman we are. So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna trowel the paint on. So what I got myself here is an 18 inch trowel. 16 would be good enough because that would cover everything. Remember the side, the railings covered, the rail cover, so I'm not too worried about it. But in preparation of trying to uh, trowel the paint on, there's a bunch of things we need to do. First of all, we need to mask off what is inevitably going to happen when we drag the paint over it's going to spill over so i don't want it to spill on this side and i don't want it to spill on the front uh, because spoiler alert i already did the front and it came out beautiful this was troweled on okay so i'm going to put a line of tape across there and across there because it will overflow i don't know if the trowel i used this trowel before which was a little better because it has some flex and it covers up the gaps, as you can see. But that's only because the wood is bowed, which you can see here. So I'm hoping I can put enough even pressure on this trowel. Remember that top part here, it doesn't really matter because that gets covered, but I'm hoping I put enough pressure on it so we get a nice, smooth, consistent pull. So uh, let me hang you up just for a second here. I'll show you how I'm gonna tape everything off. And then we will get to it. So if this works, this is the way I'm going to be rolling. No pun intended going forward. So just hang tight. Before I begin the taping process, there's a couple of things that we have to ensure. First of all, make sure this is smooth. Make sure there's no high spots, including like little nibs. That's going to catch your trowel and cause a high spot and you need to make sure everything is sanded down so i think you can see that it's a little proud of the surface so it could interfere with the way the trowel the way the trowel moves so i'm gonna just sand that down i'm using some pretty aggressive uh, sandpaper 100 grit the same stuff that you sand drywall down with if i can find it There it is. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. We're gonna brush this off with a brush with a broom to make sure all the dust is off of it. I'm gonna blow it with compressed air and then I'm gonna go over it with a tack cloth, which is right here.
Okay. Now, realistic alerts my expectation. Am I going to be able to cover up something like this? Probably not. Okay. Should we be able to cover up some of these craters? Yeah, we should be able to cover those up. So let's see what happens. So let me tape it off. I'm just gonna grab a lot of green tape. It's tight. Remember, this is for spillover. I'm the same on this side. Okay, plan of attack is to put the paint, is to roll it and start from here, push that way. Here is a situation where you do want some some slant so everything does roll this way and again i want to limit because there will be a bit of a waterfall i want to limit what lands on here okay i think this arch this angle is actually pretty good because it'll give us the most light so let me just set up the camera and we'll go for it Yeah, like that's gonna dry flat. Okay, here goes nothing, kids. I don't know if you can tell, but this stuff is literally drying as I put it on. So I don't want to keep tempting fate. I do have a wet edge here. Yeah, so it's starting to dry down here. It's almost like drywall. The more you play with it, the more of a mess you make. Okay, we're gonna leave good enough alone. I'm just going to dry this, watch this off now. Alright. 
Looks like we got a lot of tiger stripes going, but I am not too worried because it is looking pretty smooth. Might have to do some sanding here. Here's some where it's uh, peeling over a bit. Yeah, a little bit of striping over here. I didn't have too much over right here. Might have to do some touch-ups here. I'm not too worried. The pull this way was too much, couldn't do it. So that's why I ended up going this way. But let's let it dry and see how we fared. So one thing, yes, Rush fan, you're doing this against the white cabinet. Of course, it's gonna look decent. Well, I'm gonna try it against this one. I just have a couple of spots that I touched up and I'll show you how this one comes out too. We're gonna to do this live as well. Okay, even though this is in the no paint zone, so this is in the no paint zone, here's the problem. If it sticks up, second you go with the trowel, just gonna bump up, it's gonna give you a line of paint. Okay, I'm talking up to the camera. We have uh, one viewer that uh, suggested I get a mic and I appreciate the, the comments because I sound muffled sometimes. Well, that's because I wear a mask. <laughs> Anytime I sand uh, anything like that. So that's kind of why I might sound muffled sometimes. Okay, you can see what I'm doing. So again, under grip. Light sanding. This isn't too crazy. This this was uh, paint was taken off with the technique I used, the dustless stripping. Which, if you look at uh, some of my other videos, you'll see it. The compressor kicked off. Here is the one we just worked on. It's, it is smooth. Now, if I show you this way, you're gonna see some striations. I think you can make it out. So my real dilemma is remember, about this much of it is covered in decal. So you technically only see about six inches of white. So do I leave good enough alone or do I go after it again? Yes, I'm gonna go after it again. So. <laughs> All right, but let's do this one first. Okay, this is still rough. So I'm not expecting any, anything close to perfection on the first pass, so. See what happens. Okay. Oh, 
kind of paint are we using? We are using Bullseye 123 Primer. I think you guys can see that. Yeah. I'm not affiliated, sponsored, or anything like that with these guys, so uh, I've used it before with good success. It's, it was on sale, which is always a bonus. And it dries really quick. It doesn't sand very well, though. I got to tell you that. So I'm going to pour it to a tray and I'll bring it right back. This is a 12 inch. And this is the 18 that we were just using. So I like rolling, I like brushing. I read somewhere in a forum that spraying doesn't really push the paint into the fibers. But spraying does obviously give you that nice smooth finish you're looking for. So it's kind of where I came up with this technique. Now this wood is pretty dry, so I gotta get to working pretty quick on it. So give it a quick wet edge. Let's see what happens here. Okay, let's see what's going on. I actually like this idea. leave that. I'm just going to go wash these off. Give me one second, guys. And girls. All right. I'm actually kind of happy with that because that gave it a nice thin layer that took up all the little divots in the wood better than drywall compound because this stuff is sticky. Okay, so let's see if I can set you up over here. Wow, this stuff, it's sliding on really smooth here.
happy with that. you guys down. small trout. <laughs> Sorry this is all jerky guys, but can you remember this part? I really don't care about it. But I will smooth it out. Nonetheless, I guess in the painter's world, this is the equivalent of playing with fire. <laughs> This is looking really good. It's kind of hard to see because of uh, how white it is, but okay, I'll bring it back. Huh? What do you think? I don't want to touch it because it's still a little wet. Craters are gone. So if you look at it this way, it's still drying by the way, but I think you can see that. It's almost smooth to, <laughs> to mirror. Yeah, this is the way we're gonna roll. Well, not roll, but you know what we mean. So, just take the top off here. Yeah, some of the drips, I'm gonna let them settle and then I'll see how I'm going to deal with them. Okay, and then this side, this one here, we'll put it up. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty smooth. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to put this head on that famous rotisserie. Like, share, subscribe. On that famous rotisserie that uh, I built so I just uh, mudded up some of the uglies and I'm definitely going to trowel this one this should be a little simpler we won't have to go with that big of a trowel okay this is direct sunlight almost direct anyway I think it came up pretty good this thing is glass smooth. This is the side I just did. Not in direct sunlight, but I don't know if we can see anything at the angle here. There is not a bump, a nib. This side still drying, so there's the front. So this cabinet is ready to rock and roll. I've changed my position on 
troweling fresh so because I was going through way too much paint and it was making a big mess so I painted it with the roller as you can clearly see there are bumps everywhere and remember this is with a smooth roller so what I'm gonna do is once this dries it's it's kind of dry right now I'll put it on its side or I might even try it this way I roll it and then I'll trowel down and see what kind of a result we get. So I'm just gonna give it a couple hours to bake and I'll bring you back. But then again, this is the goal, okay? This is the gold standard. Some nibs here just because it's uh, dirty, but you know, it's hard to, it's hard to take white. I think I don't know. I think you can see what we got going down there. No bumps, no lumps, no humps. No nothing, so. Okay, this I didn't uh, trowel, I sanded the back. I want a little bit more meat on the back, uh, just because when you tilt it up and down and stuff like that. But then this is what, uh, here's the money shot right there. Yeah, that's the camera. Okay, I will bring you back. When we attempt this side, and oh, what's this? I think we're gonna be using a rotisserie that I showed you in another video to see how this one goes. Okay, I'll bring it back. Okay, so this is one coat of paint and we can see how puckered it is. Okay, so I'm actually going to try this vertical. Let me set you guys up. And this is the, remember, this is the gold standard here. I'm actually going to do this, uh, I'll say different. Listen, I'm going to, I can only record what I can record here. Just given I'm in the garage. And I'm inside with closed, with a closed uh, door using garage light. Okay, that's better. Let's zoom in here. Okay. I'm using garage light because the sunlight doesn't really do a good job for painting. And I'm going to use a smaller trowel because I got some flex and. Um, but I will do the final this way, like we were doing. But I'll just go down this way. And you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, perfect. Okay. You throw a coat of paint on. And let's see what happens here. And we're doing this together. I'm learning as you are, so. Oop. All right. I'm not going to go too crazy with the paint. Let's put enough. Remember, it's the bottom half. Oh, yeah, this is working out good. If it spills on the bottom, I don't care. And I have a wet edge stuff. Let's call that good. Oh yeah. Wow. 
Might have scraped some of the paint off the base layer, but let me just uh, pick you up real quick. Let's see. Yeah, you can see the, there's no more eggshell as they like to call it. And the paint world, let me open the door now, see if, You know what this is what we're gonna do? Okay, this is the unfinished side. You can see that, right? Like it's not bad, even with the roller. But up close it still looks like the surface is moon. This is what we just did. That's really good. You might not use the big trowel anymore. I think you guys can see it. Yeah, there we go. I'll give you a full on header. So yeah, there's some, you know, areas that got some gouge and stuff like that. But again, that was just a very preliminary ad hoc coat. So I'm gonna do the other side, I'm gonna let it dry. And then we will put it on the good old table there. I'm just painting the back. And then I'm going to put it uh, because I got to do some sanding here and then I'll put it on the rotisserie. So I'll bring you guys back. I am loving this rotisserie, guys. It's letting me spin this thing around. All right. So the whole purpose for the pushing on as opposed to spraying or painting is for adhesion. Okay. It's always tricky peeling tape off because sometimes you peel the whole thing off with it right but anyway okay there we go okay that's a good view okay we are going to go with paint on a brush and the smaller squeegee Not too worried about the paint hitting over here, just because I'm going to sand that to wood anyway. It's more up here that I want to make sure I don't leak over to the other side. I think we've hit this side a couple times already with the spatula. So let's see how we do here. going on what do you guys see yeah you're seeing smoothness that's for sure i don't know if this is ghosting from the grains of the wood but let's see what happens when it dries and one more time here yeah perfect I'm just cleaning off the runs on the side there because that's going to happen. Can you see the runs? You can't. 
All right, we've got a couple of done cabinets here. Now I want you to look at how smooth the finish is. This is for the next video. And the reason I holding it for the next video is because I figured out, I think I figured out a better way of painting cabinets instead of rolling them. Too much orange peel. And so that'll be for the next video. If you look, these things are Pretty dead flat. I don't know how to really show you otherwise, but it's like no orange peel on them. This is the bottom of cabinet number two. And this is the cabinet that we've been working on for the whole series. And there is a, I'll show you, like runs like this. I'm gonna give this thing about a week, two, to dry. And then I'm gonna hit this with uh, a wet sand because I know if I, I hit it with a dry sand, I'm going to peel it back and I'm not going to be happy with, with the results. So here's the cabinet. So again, this is a complete made no orange peel and there was no wet sanding on this one either. So yeah, a little dirt sitting upright and drawing but we're gonna stencil this one now and we're gonna have hopefully <laughs> hopefully we don't screw it up because uh it happened to me before where i stenciled it and it didn't quite work out and it was a lot of work so on this one i have to do my little epoxy trick to get it all nice and smooth and that'll do it for this one, guys and girls. So, Rush fan, I'm going to say over and out, and I'm going to ask you a favor. Like, share, subscribe. We're up to 214 subscribers, and every time I see a new one added, it just fills me full of joy. I want to show you something here. Before I over and out you, there's a play field. See how destroyed it is? One of these days, I'm going to show you how to restore that to make it look presentable, for lack of a better word. And I think uh, the technique I'm going to use is, uh, it might surprise you. So anyway, I'll hold you in, uh, in anticipation for, for the next little while. Rush fan over and out. So we need to ask ourselves, why do we go through all this trouble making sure we make things as perfect as we can? Well, it's so when we paint the cabinet, it comes out as perfect as it can. So nice and smooth paint, guys. Just the slightest tint of an oil of an orange peel, but it will not degrade the final product. So, okay, this is the last video in this series. Again, Russians, hope everyone the best. Let's uh, get together soon, okay? Take care. Okay, enough talking. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, LSS, as I like to say going forward. And we will bring you more content. And I really love the fact that the channel is growing the way it is. Again, I just did it so I can do something to have some fun and show my kids that, hey, there's other people that are actually interested in this stuff as well. So anyways, guys, Rush fan, over and out. Have a good one.